<clears throat> the previous or earlier than scheduled time. So welcome to your session. I don't know, maybe our session 30 or 40 now. I can't even remember now. So today we're going to do revision of study unit six and seven because that's the only notes I have. And um, your feedback on the questions are also posted on my UNISA under your lecture site. So you just need to go through them so that you can see where you went wrong and with the explanation from the lecturer as well. So we're going to look at the assignment questions. <clears throat> so <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Likewise, let's start with normal distribution. So what we need to remember with normal distribution is that a normal distribution is a belly shaped calf with the mean which is distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. That is the property of a normal distribution. And we also say this is symmetrical distribution. And it's asymptotic because with the curve, it will never, so your curve or the area underneath the curve will never touch the X axis, which is that line, never touches the X axis. And what we also need to remember is that the area underneath the curve for a normal distribution the area under the curve is what we call probabilities. It's the same as your probability. And it is equals to one. So everything underneath the curve is equals to one. And if we split this uh, probability into half, therefore this side will be 50% of the area and this side will also be 50% of the area. That is normal distribution. But now, when we calculate the, uh, or when we want to find the normal distribution probability, it means we have some units that we want to standardize. And standardizing those units, we use the formula Z mean divided by, which is the Z score or the Z value formula which is Z minus X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And this will standardize your X units into a normal distribution with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. <clears throat> and once you have your Z value, you should be able to calculate or find which probability underneath the curve you are looking for. Now, <clears throat> when you look for the probability underneath the curve, what you need to remember is we use the cumulative standardized normal distribution table, which is this table that has the positive and the negative values. It's called the cumulative standardized normal distribution with the Z scores and the probabilities inside the table. So the Z scores are those values at, on the left and at the top and this values inside the tables, we call them the probabilities. So now, what you also need to remember with normal distribution is the table that I just showed you contains the probability of Z less than a value. So if you calculate your Z value and you're looking for the probability of a Z less than a value that you just calculated, then the probability you will find on the table. If you're looking for the probability of Z greater than A, therefore you will say one minus the value you find on the table. For all the probability of a greater than, we're going to use the one minus the value we see on the table. Whether you go to the positive or the negative side of the table, 
if you're looking for the probability of z line between two values a and b then we're going to find the probability on the table for the second value which is z less than b minus the probability of the table value for z less than a so you're going to find the table value for b minus the table value for b and that is how you will find the probabilities sometimes you can be given the probabilities and you need to work back and calculate your x unit so if you're given the probability you also need to take into consideration how that probability was calculated was it with the greater than or with the less than so that you can know which values of your z you're going to be using from the table whether that probability they give you they found it by using one minus so that you can take one minus the probability and go find the value on the table or if it was the value that the probability that they found for the less than then you go to, to the table you look for the the probability within the table and you go outside so you just need to know that it is very important to know the sign that you are given. The other thing, you might be asked question to calculate the total number of, of something. So you must just always remember that the sum of all probabilities are equals to one. That is the standard thing because we said also the area underneath the curve. So it means all the probabilities underneath the curve should give us one and one we say it's the same as 100 percent so if they give you um a number or a value and they say um uh there were 2000 people and then 95 percent of them received 80 percent of the marks so you just need to make sure that you know that if you're only looking at those who receive more than 95 percent therefore it means those 2000 are the portion are the proportion of the people who received the mark but they are selected from the whole population which is the whole total which made up the 100 percent so you just need to make sure that you know how to use your proportions or your percentages to calculate an x value amount so you can calculate your x value in different ways by being given the proportion and go and find the x value so if you go to find the x value you just need to manipulate your equation because at the moment if your z formula sorry let me put it back if I'm given my z value of x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and I need to find x so I just need to make x the subject of the formula therefore it means it will be given by z sigma times z and plus the mean and we'll find our x value by that by just simplifying the formula in that manner so that is if i'm looking for the x unit but also you need to know what probability was that so that you can substitute you can go find the your z value and by that it means you take your probability from the table you go out to look for the z value that corresponds with that probability and then substitute into the formula okay with that said let's look at the questions relating to normal distribution so the first question is asking which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the normal distribution probability so i'm going to assume that this one question is asking about the properties of a normal distribution so we need to know our properties of our normal distribution so we're looking for <coughs> the incorrect question so we can read each statement and check whether that statement is correct or incorrect the z score of the mean of a normal distribution is one is that correct or incorrect true
that's correct. The z score of the mean of the normal distribution is equals to one. Is that correct or incorrect? That says the z score is equals to one. So the z score cannot be equals to one. So this is the incorrect one, but we can read through the, the rest of the other questions because this says the z score is equals to one, but the z score can be any other value because the z score can take any of the form of the, the, the z value that we have. Only the mean is equals to one. That's what, that was what I was thinking about. Yeah, but here they're talking about the z score. Z -score. Yeah. The smaller the value of a standard deviation, the narrower, the steeper the curve. Oh, that's the other thing that I didn't discuss, but that is correct because the smaller the standard deviation, the narrower the your curve will be. Because if your standard deviation, let's look at this. If your standard deviation, Your standard deviation, yeah, let's say this is where your mean is. This, if this is a normal distribution, we know that our standard deviation is equals to one. So for a normal distribution. So if my calf now looks like this, so you can see that that standard deviation there reduced to 0, comma, I'm going to make it 0, comma 0,8. And if I draw another one, as you can see that that is closer to the mean and that I can say it's 0, comma 0,2. So the, the smaller the standard deviation, the narrower your curve will be as well. And so that will be correct. The mean of a normal distribution can be any value that is negative, zero, or positive. So we know that it can take any value on this line for your mean of your normal distribution. That is true because the mean can be uh, minus one day or one day or two day. The area to the right of your standard normal distribution of 0, 0,5 and the area to the right, oh sorry, to the right, the area to the left will be 0, 0,5. And we just said it in our explanation to say, if we split it into half, this area will be 50% to the left and to the right it will be 50%, which is what we just covered when we did the explanation. A 95% of the value of a normal distribution are two standard deviation away from the mean. Oh, that's the other thing that I needed to discuss as well. So you need to also know your standard deviation, uh, your prop the properties of your standard deviations in relation to the normal distribution, because for a one standard deviation, two standard deviation and three standard deviation, what do they refer to in terms of the percentage? So one is 89%, 84%, or sorry, 84%, 95%, and so forth in terms of the standard deviation away from the means. Um, and that is also correct because 95.4% is two standard deviation away from the mean. The only incorrect answer here is option one. Any question? Any comments? Because I didn't give you the time of day to <coughs> answer the question as well. You will get time. I will give you a chance to answer the question. And this time I think I'm going to just let you answer the questions. Consider the standard normal distribution for Z. Which one of the following probabilities is incorrect? So now they say you need to go and check whether 
these probabilities are correct. So it means we need to go to the table and remember the following, that the probability of Z less than A is the value you find on the table. The probability of Z greater than A is one minus the table value and the probability of Z lying between A and B is given by the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of Z less than A. So now, if you know all these things, then you should be able to answer the question. So let's see which one is incorrect. So you need to go and find the probability of Z greater than minus 2.8. So it means you go to the Z table, you go look for minus 2. So remember also with probabilities, um, you can leave your values to two decimals. So where there is no another decimal, where it's one decimal, let's put it this way. When it's one decimal, then we can just leave it as zero. The last dec decimal will be zero. So this will be minus 2.80. So we need to check if this value is the same as finding the value of one minus the probability of Z greater than or equals to 2.80. So first let's go find what this probability is. So that is minus 2.8. And then we look for zero at the top. And that is 0, 0,0026. So I'm just going to show you only one. So this is 0, 0,0026. We just need to check if it's the same as this. So this one says this side should be 1 minus. We need to go find this probability. How do we find the probability of a greater than? By finding 1 minus the value we find on the table. So it means here we need to say 1 minus. So even though there is a minus there, but we need to validate this statement. So it's going to be 1 minus the value we're going to find on the table because of this sign of a greater than. Therefore, we need to say 1 minus the value we find on the table. And on the table, we need to go to the positive side of 2.8. So we go to the positive side and look for 2.8. 2.80, which will be the value at the top, 2.80. So that is the first column. So that is 0, 0,9974. So that will be 0, 0,99. 7, 4, and this is equals to. So we just need to check if this side are the same minus 1 minus 0, 0,9. What do you get? When you calculate that. 1 minus 0, 0,9974 equals 0, 0, 0,0026. 0,0026. And 1 minus 0, 0,0026 gives you 0, 0,9974. 0,9974. 0,99. So this site, it will give us 0, 0,9974. So unless this was a mistake or an error on the question that they gave you. Um, no, but on the other side, isn't it supposed to be 1 minus that 0, 0,0026? 1 minus? 0, 0,0026. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, oh, yes, because this site is also greater than, yes, you are right. Uh, my bet today. So yeah, also it should be one minus. So I forgot to look at the sign on this side as well. 
because it's greater than so also this site is 0 comma 9974 thank you for picking that one up <clears throat> so because this site there is a sign of greater than or equal so this site and that site are equal so therefore this question is correct that is the correct one so let's go to b b says z of less than minus 2.1 so it means you must go to the z table and go look for because the sign says less than or equal so when the sign is less than or equal the value we find on the table is the value we're looking for so what is minus 2.1 we need to go to the negative side. Minus 2.1, which is 0, 0,0179. 0, 0,0179 equals, and this side says we need to go find the probability of Z greater than 2.1. What must we do here? It's going to be 1 minus the probability of 2.1. Eh? So we must go to the positive side and go look for 2.1. And the value is 0, 0,9821. 0, 0,9821. So what is the answer there? 0, 0,0179. 0, 0,0179. So they are also equal, so therefore B is also correct. Now we're looking for the probability of between, and if we're looking for the probability of between, Therefore, it means we need to go and find the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,00 minus the probability that Z is less than minus 2.8. So, go into the positive side and look for 0, 0,00, which is 0, 0,00. It's 0, 5,000. That is 0, 5,000. Minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.8. We'll go find it on the negative side of the table. 2,8. It's 0, 0,026. Zero comma zero zero two six. And what is the answer that we're getting? It's zero comma four nine seven four. Zero comma four nine seven four, which is the same as what we are looking for. The it's the same, so that is correct. So D Go find that probability. Let me give you a chance to also answer at least one. Are we done? So okay, so what is the probability of Z less than 2.1? Is 0, 0,0026. Uh, no, for 2.1, because we first need to do the oh, probability. 2.1 is 0, 0,9821, sorry. Minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.1. 
2.8. So here we find 0, 0,9821 minus 0, 0,0026. And that is 0, 0,9795. And five, which means that is also correct. So moving to the last one, the probability of between 2.1 and 0. That is the probability of Z less than 2, 2.1. minus the probability of z less than 0 0.00. What is the probability of less than 2.1? 0, 0,9821. 0, 0,9821. And what is the probability of 0, 0? 0, 0,5, 0, 0. 0, 0,5, and that should give us 0, 0,4821. 0, 0,4821. And this one says 0,4821. So number E is the incorrect one. And that's how you will answer the question. So you'll have to go and validate each one of them so that you find the correct one. Given the Z is a standard normal distribution, what is the value of Z such that the area to the right, the area to the right of Z is 0, 0,2061? Choose the correct answer. So here they say, Given that the Z value is normally distributed, what is the value of our Z to give us the probability of 0, 0,2 to give us the probability of 0, 0,2061? And they say the value to the right. So the value to the right, we must always remember that. The value to the right, meaning on that side, what is the Z value? That's what we're looking for to give us this 0, 0,2061. Mm -hmm. Now, you must know that the value to the right, it means it's greater than. So therefore, it means the probability that they are looking for the value to the right, which is our A, which is the value we're looking for should be 2,061. So how would they would have found the value to the right? They would have said 1 minus the value they found on the table. Remember, this value is given by 1 minus the value they found on the table to give them 0, 2061 because the sign says to the right, which means greater than. So, what is that value that they would have found on the table to give them that? So, it means we need to find the value on the table by saying if we move table value that side, 1 minus 0, 0,20. 61 is equals to the table value so that we can know what probability we are looking for on the table value. So our table value will be equals to what is 1 minus 20061? It's, it's a 0,7939. 0,7939. 0,7939. 39. So we need to go to the probability table and go find 0, 0,7939. So 
zero comma seven nine thirty nine. So we also need to because we're looking for the Z value. So that Z value is zero comma eight and two. So it's zero comma eight two. So that will be the probability. Do you understand how to get there? So yes, you yes. need to make sure that you, uh, you read the question and understand the question that they are asking you because the question here they said, if we're looking for the area to the right, therefore it means we're looking for the greater than, we're looking for the greater than value and they say that probability which is this area to the right is 0 0,2061 so it means in order for them to find that probability they would have said one minus the value they found on the table they would have gotten the answer of 0 0,2061 because the <clears throat> the probability to the right is one minus the value on the table and that's what we've learned the probability to the right is one minus the table value. And we go and find the table value and the table value is 0, 0,739. Then you go and look for the Z value that corresponds to that probability. And you will find that it is 0, 0,82. Oh, B is the correct answer. Okay. Moving on to the next one. <clears throat> Consider a normal random variable with the mean of 300 and the standard deviation of 1,300. Calculate the probability that a random variable is at most. So you also still need to remember what the signs mean. At most 3,800 and choose the correct answer from the option. So we're looking for the correct answer from the option. So because they say at most, then we need to calculate the probability. We need to be calculating the probability that X, what is at most? At most is less than. Remember, at least it's greater than. At most is less than 3,800. So it means you need to go and find the probability that Z is less than X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what is our mean? Mean our standard deviation sigma, our X value substitute into the formula and calculate your Z value and then let me know what the probability is. So I can just sum up. Substitute the value on your behalf. Our X, since I've already identified them, is 3,800 minus our mean of 3,000 divide by our standard deviation of 1,800, close bracket. So getting a... Yeah, same, 6,700. Okay, so what is Z less than? What do we get? What is our Z less than? What Zero is the value? Zero point? Four, 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 four. Okay, we keep two decimals. We can leave it as 0, 0,44. Then we need to go to the table and look for 0, 0,44. Let's remove all this ink.
which is option A. Upon conducting a research, the education department found that learners travel time from home to school at one of the remote rural is normally distributed with the mean of 114 minutes and the standard deviation of 72 minutes. What is the probability that the learner travel time from home is less than 100 minutes? So also they want you to find the probability that X is less than 100. I'll give you some time to do the calculations. Remember, you will need to go use the Z formula to go find your, your Z value first. So identify what your mean is, your standard deviation is, and your X is substitute into the formula and calculate. Okay, so let's see our X is 100 minus our mean 114, our standard deviation 72. 72. And our Z value is? Negative 0, 0,194. One one nine. So we need to go to the negative side table and look for 0, 0,19. 0, 0,19. And nine, I think, is the last column. She is zero comma four two four seven. Zero comma four two four seven. She's D. She's D. Please go back quickly, Lizzie. Thank you. Okay, so the next one, consider Again, the findings from the department that the learners travel time from home to school at one of the rural areas school is normally distributed with the mean of 14 and the standard deviation of 72. And education consultant has recommended that no more than no you no more than a certain minutes of learner travel time if the department like to ensure that 15.15% 15 .15 
of the learners adheres to the recommendation? What is the recommended time travel? So they are, here they're asking you to, cut, to find X. What is X? That's what they are asking you to find. So the first thing that you need to understand is what is no more than. Is it less than? No more than is less than or equal. So what they are asking you there is no more than is less than or equal. So they are saying, what is the probability? What is the probability of x? I'm making x a small x. x actually not equal, but less than or equals to x of what is 15.15 .15 in decimal. So take 15.15 .15 divided by 100. 15.15 .15 divided by 100 is equals to 0, 0,1515. 1, 1, so what they are saying is, if this is the probability, what is the probability that Z, uh, X will be equals to this, this probability? What is the value of our X? If our probability of traveling X kilometers is 0, 0,1515. What is that X kilometers that the learner should or re be recommended for? That's what we're looking for. So we need to work in reverse. So it means we need to go and find because at the end of the day, we need to go find the probability because in a way, if I put it, this is the same as the probability that Z less than A, which is the A is the value that we are looking for, which is the, the Z value that we are looking for here is equals to 0, 0,1515. And if A is the value that we're looking for, we can actually move from the value on the table. So you need to go to the table because this is the less than. We need to go to the table and look for this Z, to, for this Z value. So you need to go look for 0, 0,1515. 0, 0,15. 0, 0,14. Uh, have you found it? One five one five. It's minus one point yeah three. One point zero three. That and you go up is three. One minus zero comma um, three. So we know that this is Z of minus one comma zero three is equals to 0, 0,1515. So now since we have the Z value, we need to work it back. So we can remove the probabilities because we're no longer interested in the probability. We can work back and go find our X value that we are looking for, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Our Z value, it's minus, 1,03. Our x, that's what we're still looking for, minus the mean is 114, divide by the standard deviation, 72. And you can just simplify. So that will be minus 1,03 times 72 
is equals to x minus 114. And if I move 114 to the other side, so I can just, since I'm going to run out of space, I can also move 114 this side, it will be plus 114 is equals to x. And if you look at, let me just run down, run up again to what we did here. So we said if we want to find x, we can just multiply by z and move um, the mean on to the other side. So it will be z times sigma plus the mean, which is equals to x. And that's what we are doing on that question. On that question. So solve the equation. Minus 1,03 times 72 plus 0, 0,4. What do you get? 39.84. 30, 39.84, and because it's in kilometers and it's rounded off into minutes, we can just round it off to 30. Is it 39? 39.84 and you can round it off to 40 minutes and see will be so the recommended travel time is 40 minutes Okay, now the next one. <coughs> the emotional intelligent quotient or EQ score of high school learners is normally distributed with the mean of 80 and the standard deviation, standard deviation of 20. If there were 2,969 learners with the score of higher than, so here it's another thing, it says higher than 95, how many students took the test? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go find the probability of those who took the test. And because it's greater than, so we need to go find the probability that Z is greater than our X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation it's greater than. So it means the answer we will get, we'll have to subtract it from one. So Z greater than our X is 95 minus the mean is 80. The standard deviation is 20. Z greater than, what is our Z value? 95 minus 80 is 15 divided by 20. What do you get? 0, 0,75. 0, 0,75. 0, 0,75. So what we need to do is we need to go and find 1 minus 0, 0,75 on the table. 0, 0,75. We'll go to the positive side and look for 0, 0,775. And that is the probability, which is 0, 0,7734. 0, 0,7734. Which means, what is the probability of those who took the or who scored higher than 95 
one minus seven seven three four zero comma seven seven three four zero point zero comma double two double six that what you're giving me okay so now we know the proportion of those but they say if there were 200 2969 of those who scored that how many took the test we know those who took the test there are many ways you can calculate this but let's let's first use the proportions that we are given so we know i'm going to show you one way of doing it we know that two nine six nine is equivalent to zero comma two two six six percent if hundred percent which is one i'm going to call it hundred percent if hundred percent of those who to get test because this is 22 percent remember that is 22 22 let's say 23 percent 23 percent of those who 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 got an iq of 90 higher than 95 100 percent of them is equivalent to one or i could say it's 100 percent of them they are equivalent to one you can say it that way if I want to know what is my X, or in this instance, I can use my N. Let's use N here. Let's use N and I'm not going to use 100%. I'm going to use one because I'm working with decimals. 100% uh, is the same as one. One is the same as 100%. So <clears throat> if I have 100%, what will be my N? So my N is equivalent to 100% of those who <clears throat> who did the score, they, they, who took the EQ. EQ test. So in order for me to find the N, I need to cross multiply. So I'll multiply to find N. So if I cross multiply, N will multiply there and I will have N and one will multiply with two, nine, six, six, nine, multiply by one. And I'm going to divide by, because I'm cross multiplying, I'm moving things around. I'll divide by 0, 0,2266. What do you get? 22969 times 1 divide by 0, 0,226. What do you get? Which it should be 2969 divide by 0, 0,2266. Two, two, It's 13,102. It's 13,102. That is um, one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, you could, um, you could find the other part that is that did not score 95 percent. So, if you don't do it this way. If you don't do it this way, you can, because I know that I have, which will still be the same. So you have your two, nine, six, nine, which are equivalent to zero comma, two, two, six, six. So one minus zero comma, two, two, six, six, two, two, Six six will give me the others that did not take the test, isn't it? This will give me my X of those who did not take the test. So if I want to get those who did not get 
uh, get 95 higher than 95. So that will give me. Um, 1 minus 0 comma that is we know that this is the same as 0 comma 7739 so that we know that because it's 34 34 that is that answer we got <clears throat> so i'm going to multi cross multiply this way with 22969 multiply by 0 comma 7734 divide by divide by 0 comma 2266 and that will give me my x <clears throat> and that will give me x will be equals to so remember i'm not using n because my n is my grand total so i'm not using n so i'm using my x so that will give me 2969 multiply by 0.7734 equals divide by 0.2266 equals and that gives me 10 133 so in order to find n I must take x plus my 2969. So I know what my x is. My x is 10133 plus 2669. Uh, two, and that will give me plus 2969131102. So you, the first method is the shorter version. So you can use this method for a shorter version, or you can go the long route. Find use the the one that you feel comfortable with. They both they both will give you the same answer. And our answer is number C. And I think that concludes our normal distribution. So we're moving into the sampling distribution, which is study unit seven. So with sampling distribution, what you need to remember with sampling distribution, it means <clears throat> you have different samples, whereas with normal distribution, we're only working with one population. Yeah, we're working with multiple samples. So the properties of a sampling distribution is that you're creating different samples and you, 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 you sum out of those sampling the samples you create, uh, you can calculate your mean, and then you can also standardize the mean of those samples so that it takes a normal distribution curve. Because usually the data will take a form of a uniform distribution. What we also need to know about the sampling distribution is that the population of a sampling distribution mean is the same as your population. You also need to know that your sampling distribution standard deviation, which is the standard, let's call this the mean so that you don't get confused. The mean, and here yeah, we have this sampling distribution of the population, uh, so the standard deviation of the sampling distribution mean is given by your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is called the standard deviation of sampling this 
distribution of means because there are different means that you can select. Or we call this what we call the standard standard error. Mean one and the same thing. The mean of the sampling distribution of the means is the same as the population mean. But the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means is equivalent to the standard deviation or the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is also called the standard error. In order for us to standardize the means and also to go find the probability, we use the z-score, which is your sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the sampling distribution standard deviation. Or we can call it the sample mean minus the mean population standard deviation. I don't know how to write the standard error. Divide by the square root of n. And that's what you need to know about sampling distribution. The probabilities, we're still going to find it the same way. The probability of a less than A, the value we find on the table. We're still going to follow the same. The probability of Z greater than A, still going to be 1 minus the value we find on the table. The probability of Z lying between two values, A and B, we're still going to find the table value for B minus the table value for A. We're still going to follow the same, the same process. Okay, so now let's get down to it. A random sample of 120 is drawn from a normal distribution population with the mean of 160 and the standard deviation of 50. Determine the standard error. And remember, the standard error is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. That is the mean, that is your standard deviation. And you are also given the sample size. Are we winning? So that will be 50 divided by the square root of n, which is 120. Four point five six. Four comma five six, which is option B. Consider a normal distribution population with the mean of hundred and ninety and the standard deviation of hundred and twenty with the sample size of fifty. A sample, a sample size of 50 is drawn from this population. What is the probability that the sample mean is between 150 and 190? So we need to find the probability that the sample mean lies between 150 and 190. So what you can do is calculate 
the probability that z lies between our sample mean minus the population divided by the standard error. And you do the same on the other side. So substituting the value, our sample mean are always in the question. So we start with the 151. Our population mean, they have given it to you. It's 190 and your standard deviation is 120 and your n is 50. So we just substitute 190 divided by 120 divided by the square root of 50 less than z less than 190 minus 190 divide by 120 divide by the square root of 50. The first one, do you have an answer for 150 minus 190? It's minus 2.36. Two decimals minus 2.36. Three six. It's less than z less than on the other side. One ninety minus one ninety is zero. So therefore this side will be zero comma zero zero. So we need to follow the same process. We need to go and find the probability that z is less than zero comma zero zero minus the probability that z is less than minus. 2.36. You need to go to the table. I know this on the table is 0, 0,500. 0, 0,500. Minus, we go to the negative side, minus 2.36. Go to the negative, we look for minus 2.3 and 6. Zero comma zero zero nine nine one. Zero comma zero zero nine one. What is the answer? Zero comma four nine zero nine. Zero comma four nine zero nine, which C is our answer. Okay, the emotional or the EQ score of grade 8 class is normally distributed with the mean of 80 and the standard deviation of 20. A random sample of 36 and of 36 grade 8 learners are selected. Let X be the EQ score of the grade 8 class. It is further known that the probability that the mean of EQ is more than 0,8849. Determine the value of x such that the sample mean is equals to 0,8849. The sample mean is greater than x of, and that probability is 0,8849. Choose the correct option. So similar to what we did earlier. So we know that, how did they find this probability? 
the probability of Z greater than a value the probability of Z greater than a value they would have found it minus by minus the value on the table which gave them 0 0.8849 49. so now we need to find this value on the table so therefore the value on the table will be the table value will be given by 1 minus 0 0.8849 because if I move table value this side and I move this one this side is the same it will be positive and that one will be negative which will be 1 minus 0 0.89 so what is our table value 1 minus 0 0.8849 0,1151. So it means we need to go to the table to go find our A. So we need to go find A. 0, 0, 0,1151. So inside the table, we need to look for 0, 0,1151. 1, 1, day. So it is minus 1.20. So our A, which is the probability that Z is less than minus, we said minus 1.2, 1.20 was given by 0, 0,8849. So now, since we have our Z value, we just need to substitute into the formula so that we can go find our mean divided by our standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by N. What is our Z value? Our Z value is 100 and minus 120, so it's 1. Minus 1.20 is equals to the mean is what we're looking for. Our population mean they gave us is 80 and our standard deviation is 20. So 20, 80 divided by 20 divided by the square root of our n. They said it's 36 divided by the square root of 36. So, cross multiplying 20 divided by 6. I could just say, I'm just going to write an arrow that goes there. So, we can rewrite this as minus 1. 0.20 times 20 divided by the square root of 36 plus because I need to move 80 to the other side plus 80 and I'm left with my x bar there. So what is the answer? I hear the zoom zoom. 76. 76. 76. So therefore, it means our answer we saying it is D. <sighs> Moscow, blah, 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 blah. In a sample of 90 schools from Sikukuni district, 72 schools reported a decline in the number of absentism or absent learners. Calculate the standard error of the proportion of schools that reported a decline. Oh, that's the other thing that I didn't talk about. So when we do sampling distribution also, we can do sampling distribution for the proportion. And let's do the summary on the site and then we can answer on there. So sampling 
distribution for proportions. So when we do sampling distribution for proportion, we are going to be given the sample proportion, which is P. If they are not giving us the sample proportion P, therefore we will be given the observation that satisfy that proportion and we can calculate it. So this is our sample proportion. The population proportion will be given by population proportion it's represented by the pi sign and if we go into standardized the the proportions then our formula we use is p minus the population proportion divided by the standard error which then our standard error is our population proportion one minus the population proportion divided by n so our standard error or standard deviation of the population proportion will just be all that underneath the square root. And you uh, uh, underneath the, the fraction. So everything underneath the square root. So that population proportion one minus population proportion divided by N. That is what we call This is what we call standard error or sampling distribution of the sub standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the proportion. It's called the standard error. And that is all what you need to remember with this. So now they're asking us to calculate the standard error. So we just need to calculate the population proportion one minus population proportion proportion divided by n. So now the challenge with this is they gave us the sample proportion because they didn't give us the population value. So we can calculate it. We can also use the sample proportion to calculate. So what are we given? We are told what the number of samples are. Uh, I'm going to assume that that 72 is 72% of the schools because proportions are decimals or percentages. So I'm going to assume that that is a typing error in terms of the proportion. They forgot to put the percentage. They should have put there a percent sign. Because the yeah, say 72 reported a decline. Maybe they should have said 72% of the school reported a decline and if that is the case then our proportion will be 0 0.75 72 0.72 so we can then just substitute onto the formula because there is no other information provided on this so this will be 0 0.72 times 1 minus 0 0.72 divide by our n is 90. What do you get when you calculate? Thank <laughs> you. 
You get zero point zero four seven. Let me just double check. Double check. Why is my calculator as well? Yeah, I got the same value. You got the same yeah. rate as well. Yeah. Mm. I I I I got zero comma zero four two. What I did is I calculated some proportion. I said um seventy six divided by ninety. Then it gave me zero comma eight. Then when I started, ah yes, you're right. Then yes, I just wanted to say if you, yes. if you do the, the, the x divided by n, you also get 0 0.8. Yes, so that is the sample proportion because I assume yeah. that they didn't give us the population proportion, so we will have to use the sample proportion standard yeah. error for this one because this is the x value. Uh, so if that is the case, thank you for that. If that is the case, then we need to calculate our sample proportion, which is our x divided by n first, which should be, which that should be, I'm just clearing out all these things that we put in, which should be 72 divided by 90, because our 90 is n. And what is our sample proportion? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. So then it's 0 0.8 times 1 minus 0 0.8. Which gives you 0 0.042. Which is 0. Point 0 0.042. 0 0.042. which is option E. Ah, but Lizzie, I would have picked that one anyway with the previous answer. So we're still being right. It was the closest. <laughs> but yeah, if that is, if you had <laughs> two options here, one was 0 0.47, then you would have chosen the wrong one. Yeah, true. Yeah. Thank you for picking that one up because I thought that is an error because I was looking at the formula and not applying my mind. That is why when your mind is tired, anything is possible. You just find shortcuts. So, yeah. Okay, so that is... Are we not finished? Oh gosh. Okay, so the next last, probably this is the last one. Consider a population proportion. Yes, there we go. Population proportion of 0, 0,66 and the sample proportion of 72 are given with a sample of 99. Calculate the value of the test statistic and choose the correct option. So here they just want you to calculate Z. Now I'm using the wrong formula, which they say calculate P minus the population proportion divided by population proportion one minus population proportion divided by N. That is the formula. So don't get confused with the this one because on this one, since they didn't give us the population values, we use the sample proportion. But the formula for Z, we always use uh, your standard error is calculated using your population proportions. So let's calculate the Z test statistic. Substituting the values into the formula. Sample proportion is 0 0.75. 
minus population proportion is 0, 0,66. Divide by the square root of our population proportion of 0, 0,66 times 1 minus 0, 0,66 divided by n. Our n is 99. <clears throat> I got one comma eight nine A. Yeah, 1,89. 1,89, which is A. A previous study has shown that 71% of schools in Sikukini district municipality have reported the decline in learner absence since the start of learner transport and the school nutrition program by the education department. Suppose a sample of 99 Sikukuni district municipality is drawn at random what is the probability that at least which is greater than or equal now 80 percent of the schools have been reported so what they are asking you is find the probability that the sample proportion is greater than or equals to 80 percent which is 0 0,80 0. let me not write it as 80 percent and write it as 0 comma Eight zero. Therefore, you need to find the probability that Z is greater than the sample proportion times the population proportion divided by the standard error, which is population proportion 1 minus population proportion divided by N. So our population proportion, which is our pi, is 71, which is 0, 0,71. Our n is 99. So that will be z of greater than 0, 0,8, 0 minus 0, 0,71, divided by the square root of 0, 0,71, times 1 minus 0, 0,71 divide by 99. That of greater than. Do we have the answer? It's E zero comma two four four. What do you get? Zero comma zero two four four. Zero comma zero two four four. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, it's zero comma nine seven five six. Sure. Are you giving me the probability already or not the Z value? Oh, I did the calculation already. Yeah, I'm looking for the Z value. Okay. Of 80, 0, 0,8, 0 minus 0, comma, that divided by the standard error. What do you get? One comma nine seven. 
1,97. Yes, that's correct. And then we need you. Now my equal. My mind is upside down. Now my equal is 11. Sorry. I want to write the equals. 1 minus the value we're going to find on the table. One from 1,97, we go to the table on the positive side of the table. We look for 1,9 and we go look for 7 at the top. 1,97, which is 0, 0,9756. 0, 0, 0,9 zero comma nine seven five six and that probability is equals to zero, zero point com zero two double four double four is zero comma zero two double four which is number e and I hope this was the last one. Oh gosh, finally. I apologize for today, but we are at the end of the road. Thank you. Any question? We are done with the revision of study unit six and seven. Do you have any question? Do Thank you, you. Have any other uncertainty or anything? No questions. Okay. If there are no questions, I will see you then on Saturday when we do study unit eight and nine, which is uh, confidence intervals and hypothesis testing a revision we almost done with the revisions thank you if there are no questions then thank you for coming and have a lovely evening bye thank you good night bye bye thank you bye thank you